And thank you, uh, thank you very much for coming along, uh, along this morning. Um, I'm sure you all know Grant Spencer, who's the Deputy Governor uh, of the bank and in charge of all the financial stability work uh, undertaken in the bank. New Zealand's financial system is sound and well placed to support growth in the economy. The banking sector is well capitalised, funding and liquidity levels are at comfortable levels and non-performing loans continue to decline. However, there are several risks to the financial system that require continued focus. The level of household debt remains high relative to household income and several measures suggest that house prices are overvalued. House lending accounts for around half of bank lending and financial stability could deteriorate if a sharp correction in house prices, particularly if accompanied by a reduction in debt repayment capacity, were to occur. We introduced a speed limit on high loan to value ratio lending in October last year to help reduce this risk. Debt levels are also high in the dairy sector although incomes are currently strong due to export prices. A reduction in farm incomes and any associated fall in land prices could place pressure on more highly leveraged borrowers in the sector. At a broader level, New Zealand remains exposed to the international financial markets due to its high external debt and ongoing current account deficit. However, strong deposit growth in recent years has helped to reduce the reliance of the banking system on offshore funding. Uh, Grant will make some comments as well. So with regard to the LVR restrictions, these appear to be having the desired effect of moderating house price inflation and reducing the risk of a sharp market correction. House sales are down significantly mortgage credit growth is reduced and we estimate that house price inflation is about two and a half percent lower than it would have been without the LVR restrictions. However, <coughs> we expect the restrictions to remain in place until the housing market comes into better balance. This will be assisted by increasing interest rates and the improving supply of new houses. We will also need to be confident that immigration pressures are not going to cause a resurgence of house price inflation. The earliest date for beginning to remove the LVRs is likely to be later in the year. Regarding regulatory policy, the bank will be commencing a stock take of its bank and non-bank regulations with the aim of improving the efficiency consistency and clarity of those regulations. We will be consulting on that in due course. A further initiative is the development of a comprehensive stress testing framework for the banking system. And in the insurance sector, following the completion of licensing, we are now developing a framework for ongoing insurance supervision. But the OECD did some work recently that was, I think, quite interesting. It basically looked at the household, uh, basically house prices relative to uh, household disposable income. And New Zealand uh, is high by international standards on that in terms of that ratio. Uh, but in terms of our historic uh, patterns, we're currently, according to the OECD, about 26% above the long-term average for New Zealand in respect of that particular ratio. And the OECD also looked at uh, the house price to rent ratio uh, and found that uh, we were currently 66% above the long-term average uh, for New Zealand. So there are two indicators which I think give an indication of the potential degree of, of uh, overvaluation. Uh, what could cause it to, uh, to moderate? 
uh, well, loan-to-value ratios are starting to uh, moderate the rate of house price inflation. Uh, interest rate rises will, will help do it as well. Uh, more supply will certainly help. Uh, and if you look at uh, the housing needs of Auckland and Christchurch, for example, over the next three to four years, it's something order of, of the order of 50,000 houses in total. So to the extent that those get built, then that will help to moderate the pressure. But uh, equally, if, uh, if, growth, uh, if growth slowed in the international economy or particularly in China, then that would start to feed through to the New Zealand economy, the Australian economy, and also affect the demand for housing as well. But let me see if Grant wanted to add anything. No, I, I think that covers it, yeah, but the, our concern was always that um, if those price multiples continued to increase, then New Zealand uh, and the housing market in particular would be much more vulnerable to an external shock. Uh, such as to the financial sector or, or coming from China. I think it's one of these sort of looming risks that you, you need to take note of and watch very carefully because, you know, it's, it's one of those things that I think is, is quite a, a high likelihood that there will be some sort of correction, particularly in, 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 the, in, the, Chinese, uh, in the China financial markets as they go through their deregulation and reform program. At some point, there be is likely to be a disruption in the financial sector and some sort of uh, probably temporary um, <coughs> pause in their in their long-term growth track. But you know, picking the timing of that is incredibly difficult. If you look at some of the work that was done by Fitch, the rating agency, I mean, basically they they said that the assets in the broader Chinese banking system had expanded uh, roughly of the order, I think, 16 trillion US dollars over the past five years, which they said, uh, if their analysis is correct, they said was equivalent to uh, what had taken uh, the US financial system 235 years to achieve. So you've seen very, very rapid growth in, in debt in China, particularly to the local authorities. Um, and. The third plenum uh, reforms that were announced were tremendously ambitious, probably the most ambitious in China um, since, uh, well, the most ambitious, I'd say, in 30 years. At the heart of them uh, is financial sector deregulation. And the challenge for China will be that no other country uh, that has undertaken financial sector deregulation and liberalisation uh, has had to do it when their economy is growing at something like 7.5% real. Uh, if you look at the experience of the European countries, our own experience, uh, those of many other OECD countries, you saw two things. You saw, um, you saw financial disintermediation and you saw a lot of financial innovation. And you can think about it because a lot of controls have come up. The ability to innovate is, is uh, open to a lot, of, uh, a lot of competitors. And that led to very rapid uh, credit growth in pretty well all the economies that went through this process. Now, as I say, no, one, no economy has had to do this when the economy's been growing at around 7.5%. So it's, a, it's going to be a huge challenge um, for the uh, for the Chinese authorities, particularly with the sort of debt explosion that's occurred in the last five years, so it's something that we follow fairly closely. If you look at dairy debt, it's about 32 billion dollars, and it's it's by and large almost trebled over the last decade. But it's, but in the last uh, two or three years, it's it's flattened out a bit. The tricky issue, I think, is is 50 percent of the debt is owned by 10 percent of the farmers. Uh, and that leaves them vulnerable to, uh, if there were to be significant reductions in, in the milk price uh, payout and declines in international dairy prices for dairy products, uh, and if that started to feed through into the price of farmland and, and that sort of thing. What we have seen is that um, 
that we are seeing a lot of um, new building permits, a uh, uh, lot of farm development taking place amongst dairy farmers, but you're not seeing, uh, you're not seeing a rapid increase uh, in credit uh, to dairy farmers, uh, lending to dairy farmers. I think from memory that's running at around 5% or thereabouts. So it does suggest that a lot of uh, the expansion works that are taking place on farms are taking place through uh, retained earnings and the high incomes that, are, that have been generated in the dairy sector.